Hi, I'm Dan. I'm a director at Spitmox. I'm here to answer a few digital marketing FAQs and bust a few myths. Today, I'm answering some questions related to using video and animation effects on your site as a follow-up to our last video on images. So the first question, you talked about how important file size is for images. What about video? Well, file size is absolutely as important for video content on your site as it is for images, if not more so. We're seeing more and more video headers being used on websites to rightly add some additional interest, context, and some movement. However, video does come with a much larger file size than a static image and therefore increases page loading speeds. However, as with images, there's a number of ways in which you can optimize your video content. Like images, choosing an appropriate format for web videos will help, MP4s, or preferably something like WebM rather than AVI or MOV file will help. Again, as with images, ensuring that the video is correctly sized for the space it's going to be used in is important, as is compressing the video once correctly scaled. Getting your vid video content as small as possible is a must, minimally under 5 meg, but smaller if possible. We're also using more micro videos within our sites to create further engagement. Typically, these are looped GIFs and are also accurately sized and compressed as much as possible. One area in which we recommend the removal of videos is on mobile. Consider that many of your users will be using a data plan on mobile and every time your page loads, it eats into that plan, notwithstanding the page loading time. And you can very, very quickly see how video can compromise mobile user experience. We often recommend the replacement of video headers with a static image on mobile view for this very reason. I often use videos in my blogs. Do they need optimizing too? Okay, so that's the second question. Both of these scenarios discussed involve hosting video on site, whether it's a header banner or an on-page GIF, and in both of these instances, it's preferable to store video on site. However, when incorporating video into your body content, whether it's in blogs or service pages, you may want to consider embedding video, video hosted by another provider, such as YouTube or Vimeo. This means that the loading occurs separately from your site and the impact on your own page speed is greatly reduced. The trade-off is that you may have to adhere to codes of conduct linked to those platforms. But if you create an account and adjust your settings, your user experience will not be compromised. How about animation? Okay, um, animation is less clear cut than videos or images, but optimizing your animations will also improve your page loading speeds. When we talk about animations, it's not things like uh, explainer videos that I'm talking about, they'd be treated in a similar way to video would, but more loading effects or things like rollovers. These are the little extra touches that make your site much more interesting and exciting to users and sets them apart. Uh, and is more kind of prevalent on the modern websites than what came before. The primary thing to consider with animation is what it adds or what it doesn't add to the brand experience. For a high-end fashion brand, it may add an extra level of sophistication to the design. However, for a building supplies e-commerce site, it's much, much more likely to get in the way and by removing or reducing animation, creates a much cleaner and quicker purchase journey. It's very much horses for courses. Whatever you do choose with animation, make sure it's not just done for the sake of it and it adds something to the user experience. That's it for today. So if you've got any questions about digital marketing, please just drop us a line. We'd love to, love to answer them as much as possible. Thank you.